Nipsey Hussle finally yeah. decided to come and visit me. Don't shoot at me, please. I that's know. It. I'm just so proud of you. And someone that's seen the success and to see the growth, I'm just so happy for you. Thank you. And to see just everybody, of course, rooting for you, wanting to see you win, which I feel is like everybody, right, you know? like right. I, It's rare we come across an artist that genuinely is good, right. talented, and people really want to see him win. Oh, that's what's up. Thank you. So how is Victory Lap? How's it going right now? Because I know you're on tour. Yeah, the tour crazy. Um, last night, we was in Boston. That was the third, well, the fourth show, the third night. We did two shows in New York a couple right. nights ago. Uh, it been it been crazy. This is my first time bringing a live band with me. And so that been dope. Everybody been, um, you know, really, really giving us dope responses on just how the music sound live with the band and everything. Right. We did a ton of rehearsals and just was really working to make sure that the, the set was tight. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we four shows in, but the feedback been great. We've been having fun every night. So, yeah, it's dope. What's the biggest difference between East Coast, West Coast when it comes to your performance? The guest list. <laughs> That's the biggest difference for real. The guest list. I'd be I'd be stress free any other city than LA. If I feel I, that. When I'm in LA, that shit, man. And you know, I be tempted to cut my phone off and just go do yeah. my job, but it's so much love and people I grew up with and just that been rooting, bought mixtapes out the trunk on the way. I know. Out. So, you know, that it's always a, a chore to but, make sure So what do you do? You just look out for everybody? Uh, no, not everybody. Some people, just the ones that really, you know the difference between the right. genuine support and the ones that just want to be at the venue because it's cracking. Right. So the people that really deserve to be fought for, and we might not talk to them till 10 minutes before we go on, they bomb in the parking lot. Yeah. They send somebody out here and it's like, who is that? Oh, all right, he's somebody or she's somebody that deserve it. Yeah. And we always plan on not doing that, mm -hmm. but somehow, some way we end up it was in a scramble at the last minute, but yeah, I would say that really just that's the biggest thing. Yeah, getting everybody that's came to show love and support into the venue out here just be like, bro, you know what I'm saying? Yes, you, you working. You yeah, get you a ticket, man. What does victory lap mean for you? Um, it has it has a lot of meanings. Mm -hmm. You know, it's layered. I think on the on the on the music side of it, like we was talking about before the interview started. I've been in the game for a while. I had a mixtape run right. before. Um, I dropped my official album, you know, um, we've been building on like a grassroots level for a while. Right. And so just to, you know, we, we, we always had our eyes set on taking it to the next level and it continuing to grow. So to put an album out, to get a new partnership, to be able to establish ourselves on our terms, it was always important to me that I was able to bring myself as an executive also, you know, cause we was always right. invested in, in, from day one, we was we was playing multiple roles. Outside of doing the music, we was also handling all of my business. So right. I never wanted to be represented as just an artist. So right. to be able to do a partnership with Atlantic through our company and get my first album out through that. Yeah, because this is your first yeah. major yeah. debut album. For sure. So that was big. That was that's a victory to me. Um, and then just coming up. And it was on your terms. That's, that's, the, the, that's victory. the biggest part. We could have, we, and not to sound cocky or nothing, but we could have put the album out a while ago. Right. You know, we could have done a deal a while ago, but it was just about partnering and doing it on the terms that we was fighting for. Right. And so we, we kind of, I say I gambled it a little bit and, and, and risked, you know, uh, a little bit of, of, my, of my career on saying this is how I want to do it. Because, you know, this is, a, this is a, a genre of music that they give you a short window, mm. typically. So, you know, by us being in the independent space for such a long time, it was a, a, a you know, a behind the table convo of like, you know, this might be taking too long or, you know what I mean? You might um, be hurting yourself by trying to hold out, but I feel like everything ended up working out how it was supposed to. You bet on yourself. 100%. That's that's what it was. It's like, well, I actually believe in myself and it's fine. I'm gonna do it this way. Yeah. And I think that, Man, it just speaks volumes, and you've always been so big on ownership. Yeah. And I, can you explain to people why ownership is so important? Because I think they, it sounds good, yeah. but I don't think they understand truly the power behind it. Like you own your masters, right, right. that is powerful. Right. And I think people need to just understand that from you. I mean, I think if if we just, I'm a student of the game, right? In all the games I play outside mm -hmm. of music, I, you got to pay attention, and the people that you know, 
empower themselves to have a career after the music stop. Right. To have a chair after the music stop, somewhere to actually sit down. Um, they had untraditional business arrangements. Right. They didn't have the traditional interaction with the music industry because it's built, you know, to um for lack of a better word, to you kind of like manipulate the yes, artists for their yes. own. And you know, the, it, the, the industry wasn't built by artists. So right. you, you can't even be mad at it for real. You just got to figure out how to use whatever leverage you got right. to, to become an exception to that rule because it's, it's a rule. You got great soul singers, great R&B artists, even early hip hop artists that's pioneers that's in the you know Hall of Fame of this right. thing. But financially, they are not they're not in the best situation. Doesn't that make you sad? It makes me sad when I yeah. see that. I, yeah. It actually it irks me. It infuriates me because this is not how we should treat the legends. Right. And it really bothers me. And I'm just like my heart breaks because I feel like every other genre they take care of everybody that goes through their genre. Right. They could go on tour when they're a hundred bazillion years old, 100%. and people will show out and support. And so when I see that, I what what is it? What what happened? I mean, I don't I don't got the full science on it, but sure. I, I feel like a lot of it maybe has to do with people didn't really believe that hip hop would do what it did. Right. It was gonna be sustainable. Like right. It'd been going for what, 30, 40 years yeah. now. And then we got people that had transcended, like you know the names, that mm -hmm. took it all the way to the next level in business. And um uh, I think that as that happened, th the demand for respect became more and more in the forefront right on all on all levels as far as the business arrangements and just even how you how you what what time you air the art the hip-hop nominations during the war shows Ugh. just on all levels the, the respect been demanded more and more as as these artists that you know took it to the next level you know became more powerful so i think that uh i think it had a lot to do with people not thinking hip-hop was going to be here mm -hmm. too long not thinking they had to deal with hip-hop with respect Right. Um, but then just traditionally in music, just the music business, right. you got people that, you know, they got horror stories even outside of hip hop. About, right. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah. Just like find themselves in, can I cuss? Yeah. Yeah. Fucked yeah. Fucked up situations. Oh yeah. You know, a so, lot. You know, I think it's just about, it's like sports. Oh yeah. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta really be strategic to circumvent you know, the, the, the traditional outcome, which right. is like, you know, you broke after five, six years after you've done with your career. You know what I mean? So the ones that, that are able to, you know, transcend and, and, and become opposite to that, you got to salute and tip your hat and then pay attention to their moves and take pages out their playbook. You have a song with Puff on the album yeah. where you're talking about owning your masters. Yeah. Did you and Puff have a conversation about business and entrepreneurship or anything like that? Did he leave any gems with you? Or was he just like, well, you know it. You're good. <laughs> I mean, I, I think you could you could watch somebody footsteps, mm -hmm. and if you're really paying attention, you don't even have to get it directly from them. You can right. watch how Puff move. You right. know what I mean? And put the microscope on on the business that he's created. But we had we had convos about music, about about business, and um, you know, I asked Puff what his worst mistake was. Mm. More so than what your the successes is always publicized. We always hear about the successes. Right. I'm just like, what you think your worst mistake was? What or that's a good you know, question. What you think you did wrong? You know, yeah. I wouldn't say it on camera, but he gave me an answer, and I took I took some game from it. Next time I see him, I'm gonna ask him yeah. what it because I'm so curious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it, it probably was a good answer. For sure, and it made sense when he said it to me. I'm like, yeah, because as a fan <laughs> watching from the outside, I agree. That probably was. A, a, a time where yeah you had to recover yeah you know what I mean but Puff didn't I think anybody like you gotta you gotta expect mistakes you oh yeah you can't be so rigid that you feel like you're gonna get through this thing without bumping your head and it's like a fight you gotta take something to get some what would you say has been your biggest mistake my biggest mistake in music and it could be life music anything that you feel like I could have handled that situation better but I'm glad I went through it um think just I would say not trusting my instincts mm. sometimes sometimes you know I, I would and not to sound sexist but even just as a man we so logical and mm -hmm. we so driven by logic and so driven by facts that mm -hmm. sometimes we can't move without facts but if you got 
mm. trust in your gut and you got trust in your instinct and you you learn that as you grow older and you mature that you you sometimes you don't need facts you can just go off your gut and how you feel about things damn you know what i mean so just being confident in i don't need confirmation if i feel it i trust how i feel i know my in intentions is pure my instincts is like connection to a higher understanding you don't need the facts all the time just go off how you feel and so i think that i've learned to listen to my gut and my instincts more and, and be confident in making decisions off of that that's good yeah. that's true yeah. yeah i mean i think that applies to all of us that's why i said i don't want to separate the, the way a woman process from how a man process it, it's everybody across yeah. the board yeah is there a particular situation that you could share where you're just like i wish i could have stuck to my instinct it was telling me make a left but i made a right man let me think about it i for sure have okay. a few um I think all right. So before I did my, I had a, I had a record deal with Epic Records early. Okay. And I don't take back nothing. Everything sure. happened for a reason, right? But coming into music, right? I was always I was a hustler before rap, and me and my brother was was fairly successful mm -hmm. hustling. And I never wanted to, you know, um, compromise my standard as who I was before music for music. I always right. wanted to just be who I was and put my music out from where I stood. I didn't want to have to get into the industry and play industry games. And You're an artist. Yeah. yeah you just. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So I was like, uh, I'm going to go. I had this plan. I'm going to go independent. We're going to have our own thing. We're going to the goal is to sell 50,000 units. Um, my goal is to be able to get 15,000 in the show. I thought that was a lot of money Man. when I was in the streets. Yeah. You know? I, of course. Because it's like 15,000. You do a lot for that. You yes. Know, before you get into a legit space of getting legitimate money. So that was the goal. And um, we had bought equipment. We invested in equipment. You know, my brother had bought a house, put a studio on the back, and we nice. was 100% self-sufficient. And, you know, my brother went to prison. The house got raided. The police came, took everything, took the equipment, mm. and put me in a compromised situation. My brother's not only my business partner, but, like, one of my closest people in my life. I can fight in my bro. And so he was in prison. Man. Our whole setup was gone. I had stopped hustling to record music. And I was just in a compromised situation. And I had told myself I'm, I'm going to be independent my whole time. But Epic Records came to the table with a deal offer. Based on the music I had recorded before, mm. um, you know, the raid took place and everything was taken. Right. And it was a, it was a hard decision because I'm like, that's not what my plan was. But I'm like, you know... I was back on the block to be just blunt. Yeah. You know, I was selling work. It was, we was getting in real, real, you know, uh, dangerous situations. And um, it was almost like, I don't want to just hurt myself from sticking to my guns. Let me just jump out of this this this, this pot right now. I'm in right. a hot pot. Let me get into a little more stable situation. And I took the deal. And I, I think that it saved me from a lot because a lot of the people that was around me at that time, you know, uh, didn't make it for whatever reason. And so I think it, it, it took me out of a real volatile situation and the moment was real intense. But when I look back, I'm like, mm. you know, could I have stuck it out and, and figured out, you know what I mean? And that's why when, when this moment came up, when I was back independent, I had got off Epic right. and I was working my, my independent uh, moves. There was all type of deals was offered. Right. And I'm like, you know, I'm sticking to my guns. If I, if I go broke, if I become irrelevant, if my window closes, that's all part of the game. You know, I'm going to go with what I believe. And so that's why <clears throat> when we got our partnership and when the album, you know, was done and we turned it in and started rolling it out, it was a special moment because it confirmed, um, mm -hmm. you know, one of my gut instincts, which was that stick to the script. Die, be, be willing to really die for what you believe in, for real. Really, really, like, go to the go to the last round with what you right. believe in you know it's hard not a lot of people could do that that that's nah. what it separates a lot of people it's defining yeah Absolutely. i mean if, if we, you was talking about cap I, yeah. and, and not to compare what cap's doing because i feel like his, his stance is so much more about the 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 public than it is about him personally right you know what i mean so i wouldn't want to compare my personal thing to that but just about the part about just Convention. risking your own self yes you know convenience or your own comfort for for something you believe in yeah. yeah which is you know you would think it's easy for people to do the right thing because it's the right thing to do regardless of the consequences regardless of what's going to come with it but 
it's not always like that though. Nah. You gotta not everybody's built life. for this. Yeah, you gotta and it sound good at the beginning. Oh, it's it's like it's a very romantic thought. Like, but oh then, wow. It's like, oh, hero stuff. And yeah, it's like, nah, do you re do you, gonna, you really ride that want all? this? Yeah, can you really ride that out? Can you really go, you know, to the level that we see Yes. You know, what it what it what it really does and it's like how you you'll get halfway down that road and realize, damn, it's a further distance to turn around and it is to just keep going absolutely you know what i mean I it, gotta, it's like when people see your success that you grew up with and they just well you know like put me on like yeah. just no give me a deal like no look out for me and you're just right. like i don't think you understand what yeah. i had to go through to to get to this point and even this point you're 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 already thinking about the, the next, next level, point 100%. and the next one after that yeah. and, it, and it really never it never stops nah. when when will it stop for you, if anything? When when do you feel that, okay, I could take a little longer vacation than usual? I mean, I read something that, that gave me a perspective on that. It's like this 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 whole thing, we look at life like it's about what you can get from life. Mm. And I think, you know, I read something, I was like, that's not what it is. You're going to always be unfulfilled if you look at life like that. It's about knowing you're going to leave one day. And, you know, when you leave, the only way you're going to be fulfilled is if you know you gave everything you had. Really, though? And you yep. emptied yourself here. And mm -hmm. you left it all here because it's temporary and you got a moment, you know? Right. So I think that for me, it's like I got kids. I got a daughter and a son. Right. So, you know, you got to factor in your kids. You can't just all the way commit yourself to your cause. Right. You know, um, you got you to gotta make sure that you're there for your kids. But outside of that, I'm, I, I want to be in this thing until, you know, I'm, I'm out of energy till I don't have nothing left to contribute. Right. Yeah, and it, it, it might not always just be making music and being in front of the mic, but just a part of hip hop culture and just a part of, you know, uh, what this thing has become. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people, like I said, I, I feel like you're one of the few that everybody roots for and they just want to see you do good. I remember when Jay Z got Crenshaw right. and it was just like, wow, it was $100 a pop and he went and got 100 of yeah, yeah, it. I was yeah, like, yeah. wow. That was epic. Did you know Jay Z was gonna support you on that level? Nah, I didn't have no clue. I didn't have no no idea. Um, I found wow. out, you know, as it was taking place that somebody had reached out on behalf, and um, mm. you know, you know how big that is, especially for yes. hip hop artists. You know, that's our, I guess, in your space. You know, who's who is the goat? Like right, Oprah is that the goat? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, of like media. Or yeah, whatever. I, we'll give Oprah that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. You know, for us, it's, yeah, it's like it's, Oprah caring, and you know what I'm saying for sure. Yeah, so you know that was big, and then just the the attention that that put on the project, also. Yeah, know, how were the sales after that? They went crazy, honestly. They went crazy, and then a lot of people, um, business people, also wanted to follow suit and be like, "Man, I'm gonna get, I'm, I'm gonna get fifty of it, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna spend, you know, five thousand, ten thousand with you, and, yeah, and buy a box of two. So it snowballed. <laughs> it went crazy. Yeah, it yes. was dope. You know, I heard a rumor that Jay Z, Puff, everyone bought Victory Lap, a hundred fifty copies. I'm trying to get everyone to go. For <laughs> oh right, right, yeah, yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Everybody did. Are you kidding me? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> go get that though. You know what I mean? ASAP. Oh man, that's that's so great to me. Did you ever have to get clearance from Jay Z for using the Hard Knock yes. sample? So, um, you know. Since we did the partnership with Atlantic, they got a whole legal department that, uh. that, that handles that. But my understanding, and people have, since I said this on The Breakfast Club, mm -hmm. like reached out and told me that it was a little bit um, unfactual. But from what I heard, when Jay got the record cleared originally, he it, it was something in his agreement that made it to where, you know, they, they, they would continue to clear for hip hop artists for the Andy sample. Because yeah. I was going to ask, he had to get it cleared first. Yeah, for sure. And they didn't. I read Decoded, the book he put out, and he was talking about how they didn't, they didn't clear that first, and he had to write them directly and, wow. and, and tell a story about just why the, the song means something to him. And, and after they got his personal letter, they cleared it for him. Well, and for hip hop, that's the part I'm kind of, I I wonder if Jay, like, I guess it's a question for him, knew what he was doing by making sure other people after him could continue to use that yeah that's something to ask i would i can only assume but right you know they they cleared it for us and then we had to clear jay version also because we used the version that he used on his album got it but um they made it happen for us yeah who's on your bucket list to work with if you had to put your perfect 
list together of three people that you hope to work with one day. That's and still living. That's still alive, right? right. Um, uh, man, I, you know, I would love to do something with Jay, right? Obviously, um, who else, man? You got two slots left. I know. We're putting it out in the energy. I know a lot of the, a lot of the artists from my generation I've worked with. Honestly, a right. lot of the greats. You know what I mean? Um, Dr. Dre would be <sighs> dope. I actually got it. I actually got in the studio with Dre before, and we 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 started a concept for the Compton album. It didn't end up making it, and then uh. And how brilliant is he? I love. I well, this is a such a West Coast like. Yeah, nah, Dre, Dre, you know, Dre is he's in a league of his own, honestly, okay. creatively on the business side, but just um to really put the microscope on his on his distinguished or distinguishable talent that that separates him i think his his thing is that he he really is a scientist oh man I yes think he, i think he really sticks with it longer than anybody else you know right. what i'm saying i think he really a, a look and stare at some shit until he understands it and yeah. that's his advantage in my opinion from the outside looking in god that's good i like where this is going yeah. jay dre and, and i would have to say um and you're not married to this you know it could change nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm you just know. thinking off the top of my head Man, um, Lauren Hill. I think Lauren Hill next nice. level. You know what I mean? I think she made one of the dopest albums ever. You know, and then Adele. I think Adele's dope. Oh. I, don't, I don't just want to do rappers and, and men only. I, I love female vocals. I love female R and B artists. So I would say, you know, a, a, a Lauren Hill or Adele. Yeah. You know what I'm saying that'd be crazy. Oh, that would be beautiful. Yeah. And, you know, for a lot of people who don't understand the politics in L. A. and gang life, like they just hear it on songs, yeah. right? It's funny, I'll talk to people out here, and they're like, so is it like real, real, or like real, real? And I'm like, it's real, real in LA. So when they see you and YG getting together and working on a record, how does that happen? You know, I think for those who remember, when Death Row was around, there was, how did that work with Suge Knight and Snoop? It was right. the dynamic of you working with somebody who, you know, isn't part of the same gang. How, how does that go about? Well, it's something in, in just growing up in um in the neighborhoods we grew up in where you had, you know, big homies or older people that was honorable men. And they, they'll give us the real perspective. And, you know, before anything, you a man. That was something mm. that we got taught early. Right. Before any of this, you a man. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that don't mean that, you know, you don't, you're not going to stand with your tribe, but before anything, you're a man. So you got you to gotta know what it, be, what it means to be a man. You got to make decisions as a man right. first, not just as a part of this game. Right. And I think that explains how, you know, YG being a power rule, you know, right. me being from 60s, how we could coexist and be have a friendship. And, you know, his homies would be around and my homies would be around and got to understand it. And then we communicated early about, you know how we how we visualize this thing going right and um uh, you know it just I, I i respect dude as a man right you know what i'm saying i, I know if he grew up where i grew up he'll be from 60s if i right. grew up over there where, where he grew up i'd be a, a paru right that's how that's just how the cookie crumbled but behind all of that what type of man are you what type mm. of human being are you because i got people from my side of the tracks that i don't fuck with the type of man you are right you know what i'm saying i can't only I, I can't fuck with you on no level even though we in jail might have to ride with each other right or on some like street shit you on the same side as me the type man you are i don't respect mm. and vice versa people on the other side of the tracks that you know i can see past the the politics and see you're an honorable man and I, I can respect that i love that do you think there'll ever be a day where it's just completely unified or is that just do I think or do i do i do i hope both i want i want the Cavs to get it this year i want lebron <laughs> to do it you know what i'm saying as much i know you from the back oh, wow. don't shoot Nipsey. don't shoot me i'm just being honest right and i fuck with steph right i, I fuck with the with the warriors i really do but no, you, you don't. No, you I want do. the Cavs. I was to just win. at the, the the Oracle with Were Steph. You? Yeah, probably like a month ago. I was, you know what I mean, before the playoffs started. Yeah. I'd done an interview with Steph and we had a real convo. And um, uh, you know, that <sighs> championship rings on and all that, but just being I wanted Harden to go to the finals. Why? Because I got a personal relationship with James Harden. Okay, that's okay, that's LeBron, fine. Then. LeBron, you know, outside of what he done to represent my shit, right. Just, you know, where he come from, how he grew up, what he turned into, what he represent. I wanted to, and just him being the underdog in the series. Right. I wanted his legacy to go 
up another notch with being with being able to go against all the odds like he did last time when he was three one when right. he was down three one. But I brought that up to say I would like to see that. Do I think that's gonna happen? I don't really think that's gonna happen this year. Would I like to see what you just asked? Right. Man, I would like to see that for real because you know I'm nip now. I've made it into a comfortable seat. Right. You know by the grace of God and through all the hard work, but that's rare. You know what I'm saying? Mm. What you seeing with YG, what you seeing with Schoolboy Q. Yes. That's not regular. I'm telling you, that's not regular. We could take that for granted. Right. Like everybody else, you know, um, niggas got their mind right and, and, and got out of this life and went on into another perspective of living. They in jail, they right. on drugs, or they dead. And that's the that's the, that's the the popular uh, lingo. That's what everybody say about. But in reality, though, you know, I, I think about my generation people that grew up with me and just in my immediate community mm. and this is a one-on-one and that you know what I mean this don't happen a lot you know and it almost got took for me a lot of times too so I them odds I wouldn't want young people to keep having to beat them odds because it's not it's not a, a likely success ratio you know what I'm saying right so I would like I would love but honestly I see it evolving into right. something different I think technology got a lot to do with that really yeah because it's cameras everywhere. Think about right. outside of crime, right? Right. Who can get away with anything in 2018? Who, if you're I mean, not who Trump, you say you but, are, right. well, yeah, he's not even hiding it. His shit, right. his, his shit is coming but out, hey. and, and he's saying, "Fuck it, I'm the president. I'm, I'm right. me." I'm just yeah. saying, who can, who can get away with secrets? Who can keep secrets right. in 2018? You can't. You can't do nothing. It's not possible. Nah, you gotta be who you say you are. Right. So if you out here doing dirt and you out here doing crime, that shit is gonna get caught on camera. Somebody gonna tell on you. Your phone gonna be on one of these cell phone towers. Mm -hmm. It's not like it was when gang banging was created. Right. It, it it was created in a different environment in a different reality. So right. To carry the same energy into 2018 is self destruction for real. It is. Yeah. I wanted to talk to you about F Donald Trump. Yeah. Uh, when you were you concerned when the song came about? Were you like, all right, the feds are going to be watching. They hate us. Were you at all, or were you just like, it is what it is? I was on some this shit tight. This shit. <laughs> this is like uh, fuck the police. Yeah. 2017, whenever yeah. it came out, I wasn't thinking about. It was freedom of speech. You know, yeah. we didn't make no threats. Right. I didn't think we made threats when 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 the um, Secret Service reached out. They had a list of things they needed edited, or they said they was gonna pull YG's album. So you know they they had concerns about some of the lyrics, but I didn't think about it like that. I just was like, damn, and it happened so natural for real. Right. It was really like how I walked in. Oh, what's up? What's yeah. That? yeah. Let's do a song. Okay, what you think about fuck Donald Trump as an yeah. idea? Oh, that sounds tight, bro. What you? All right, YG, like I got a beat. He played a beat. He started mumbling the hook. He go in the booth, lay the hook, and then came out in the whole studio reacting like, damn, is this something? This sound crazy. He, all he said was fuck Donald Trump. Right. Over and over, but the, the way it's, it locked into the beat, and Arab, it was like Young Thug was in the studio that day, Mustard was there, my whole team was there, a lot of YG team was there, and everybody just was like, start looking around like, we should lock the door and finish this right now. This is right. something. And we just did it in one day. And uh, we shot the video a couple of days later, and then it came out. And this was when he was still campaigning. He hadn't won yet. Right. So we was just really trying to make sure he didn't win. We right. Didn't, we was like, this dude going to sell a book off right. this campaign. He's not going to become the president. And when he won, the song became that much more um, meaningful, you know? Where were you when it got announced? Did, where, and did you believe it at first? I, I think I, I, I'd be so busy working that right. I catch it as it's unfolding. Right. They're like the polls looking like he going to win. I'm like, he ain't going to win. And then... <laughs> Karen Civil was working on the Hillary campaign. Right, that's right. She had the celebration set up for Hillary. And I'm thinking that we had it in the bag. Like, when I say we, I just mean the opposite of Trump. Because right. Hillary, no disrespect. Right. She not the most... Um, Favorable either. You know, but right. if it was a choice between we going to ride with Hillary right. off the rip. So, um, yeah, when they said Trump won, I don't remember where I was at. But I'm like, I was in shock. Almost how I felt when Obama won, but on the opposite end of the spectrum. Mm. I was in shock when they said Obama won. I couldn't believe it. I right. know the aunties in the living room start crying. I remember being at one of my homeboys' houses and all the women start crying. And I'm like, damn, this is real. This dude just won. We got a black. I was like in shock a little bit. And that's what I was in happy shock. Right. You this, know what I'm saying? Yeah. When when Trump won, I was like, damn. <laughs> 
I don't know what, what that means. I don't I don't know what's going on right now. So I just was a little bit um confused and let down and then like And curious well, to know what's gonna that happen. That was my next thing I was gonna say, like, all right, well what does that even mean? Is, right. Is, I know the president is not the end decision maker. Sure. It's right. a whole staff of decision makers behind the president. Right. But a lot of his perspective oh yeah trickles down into them decisions you know what i'm saying so the tone of the country the, the energy it's everything shit, yeah. absolutely even how the police acting oh of course you know course. what i mean e even even how you know um one of my business partners you know um grew up in what well, was born in mexico you know mm -hmm. we in la it's a lot of people that was born in mexico that come to la right we were out on the border in california and the way trump was campaigning was really affecting my guy and I seen it. I seen it like hands on because he he ride with me on all trips. He like, bro, I can't go on this trip. He my tour manager. I can't go out the country. Um, his situation was really in jeopardy. And you know, watching it on TV, we like that's not right. But then seeing it up close and personal, mm -hmm. I'm like, damn, you know, this dude went to college. This dude graduated college. This dude never had a crime in his life. This dude right. is a good person. And just I saw it up close and personal, you know. So. He got his thing situated though now, so good. He, he good, he good. Yeah, it's a lot, man. Yeah. I, I know a lot of people were surprised that you had Kanye's picture up when you were performing FDT, and they thought, and I mean, maybe you did want to take a shot, but I think from what I've gathered, that really wasn't the focal point of just going in on just Kanye. Nah, if I'm gonna say, look at Trump. When we, when we took a shot at Trump, we said, fuck Donald Trump. I right. don't do the subliminal. I'm not finna halfway this you or none of that. I just thought that the picture had a lot of conversation around it. Mm -hmm. We was in Washington, D.C. for the Broccoli Fest. The White House is around the corner. I was going to perform Fuck Donald Trump. Right. I wanted to create a moment. And I didn't want to. Honestly, this is the truth uh, um, uh, and the honest thought that I had. You know, yay trolling with that hat. Right. We know that. You know what I'm saying? He, he, he trolling for some type of reaction. Right. So... To, to troll the guy that's trolling. You know what I'm saying? Right. On the a, on a stage. That's right. all I was really doing. I ain't even part of that culture. Right. I don't believe in just uh, reckless attention. I, right. I, don't, I didn't grow up like that. I, I grew up more off of like respect. Yes. Than like just do anything so people pay attention to you. Right. But that's the era we in right now. Yes. So I was more so just pointing to that. Right. That, okay, we gonna do anything for attention. You know what I'm saying? And this picture has so much conversation around it. This song needs an image for stage. Right. We're going to use that image and let the people react to seeing the the hip-hop icon that Ye is right. represent somebody that is completely opposite of what hip-hop stands for. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And so I, I, I really am a fan of Ye's music. You know what I mean? I think Ye is important to hip-hop. I just don't agree with that part of his his comment. Well, yeah, and the, and the comments he said were very hurtful and yeah, inappropriate yeah, yeah. on TMZ. I just, I almost couldn't, I couldn't believe it. I think that, I was like, yo, wait, what? And I th I think it was just so painful and I, I was disappointed. Yeah, and my, my thing, one thing I know about us as hip hop, we defend our own. We yes. don't let you talk bad about our artists. Yep. Man, you be on trial for murder, we gonna ride with you. You right. know what I'm saying? We not, we don't, we don't, we not gonna, we defend our own. Right. So when, when it's somebody that you probably defended in the past. Yes. And roll with, does some shit like that. You like, damn, you know, that one I can't ride with. Yes. I can't defend that one, bro. And I think that's all like Snoop, everybody reaction was just like, we so used to just riding with our, yes. the people that's a part of hip hop and just that represent what we represent, that we had to be vocal. Like we not riding with that, bro. You, yeah. You, you, you might got a little too comfortable having, yeah. you know what I mean? Everybody with you and, you got to come back home a little bit, bro. And that's what, if you got real loved ones in your circle, they, if, you right. come from, if you come from anything real, this is what I be telling people, me personally, I got to go back to a real place. Mm. So no matter where I go, I be in the industry, I be in Hollywood, I be in this funny style ass music industry. Right. Hollywood, all type of shit. No matter how goofy and weird this shit get, I can't make no move that my, my, my ground zero is going to not respect. Because I'm, 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 liable to them still mm -hmm. that don't mean i can't evolve and become successful and, and elevate and push forward you know the 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 shit that hold us back no we're gonna lay you that where it's at but i gotta respect game i can't go against the grain just because that's the the new standard of this environment i'm in mm. and i think that 
you know what I mean? Um, all of us as hip hop artists, we gotta be liable to, even if you don't come from the hood or you're not from no block or you're not from no no area where it was standards, right. you were part of hip hop. Hip hop got a standard. There is you, a crucial standard. You know what I'm saying? And you gotta hold yourself to that standard or else you're gonna be ostracized and if you don't check yourself, you might be revoked. Absolutely. You know what I mean? What would you say has been the biggest misconception about Nipsey Hussle? Well, honestly, I think I was responsible for the misconception about myself. Just because, really? Yeah, I do. Because I think that when I first came in the game, I didn't have a filter. I didn't, I didn't understand how big my platform had become. And I would just talk about the true reality of my life and the true reality of mm. my environment, true reality of, you know, the culture I just came from. I got out to county jail and had a record deal waiting on me and mm. came to New York and recorded my first mixtape and been Nipsey Hussle since then. So I just came from a, 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 a gladiator school into the industry and it's it was different. It was still on me a little bit. Right. And I, well, you know, I was talking to um, somebody I respect a couple of days ago and I was just like, you know, I used to get on camera and talk about street shit. Right. Or talk about gang culture. Right. And then I get to my show and everybody want to show me that they hard. And everybody fighting in the crowd and shooting up the parking lot. And so I'm like, damn, you know, I'm 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 putting out an energy through these interviews or through this conversation I'm having on camera that's bringing it, it's it's showing back up in my show. So that's when I decided I'm gonna I'm speak what I want to see. And I start talking about business and I oh, start yeah. speaking about opportunity and speaking about progress and optimism. And I saw that come back to me also. And I, see, I was going to say, I think I see more of that more than anything yeah. is that you are clearly a businessman. You're about your business, but you're also about your community. Like there, there's not like, oh, maybe it's like you care about your people. This is right. what it is. And right. you care about making sure your business lives on. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you're doing a great job at it. Thank you. I mean, it, it's definitely hard though when you're transitioning no nah, it's it's it's, it's, the, it's hard it's the most uncomfortable shit yes and the most um i don't even like to say scared right but right. it's a scary thing because it's, it's uncharted territory yes you know what i'm saying so i really had to be conscious and be like bro are you scared like, right is this some shit you scared of right now and if you know once you identify some fear the next thing you want to do is get rid of it Right. You know what I mean? But you got to be clear about what's what holds you back. Mm -hmm. from, like you said, just making the transition and being able to embrace the opportunities and, you know, not let your tradition stop you from becoming yes. what you're supposed to become. Yeah. Yeah. You know? It's such great gems today. This is just, just so good. It's, it, it took long enough, right? But look, I mean, we're, we're getting there. <laughs> no. I, you know, and how how are things now with you and and it could be i could be so far off and you can let me know with you and 21 savage did are you guys okay or are nah, we not I'm, okay and you, you know, don't have to crazy. talk too much nah, about listen, it i'm gonna be honest with you i was at the hotel the, the bell man was like what's up with 21 that's my nigga i fuck with 21 Savage. so what's the you know to, what's to the quote, problem to quote donald trump what donald trump say fake news fake yes they just got i don't know what the blogs how they vet their stories and whatnot but I ain't want to give the shit no life. Right. All I got to do is really go scroll through my timeline. Like you always big up to, I guess I really did go back and I was like, I don't understand why this energy is coming when all I've seen you is just show him love. So I was like, nah, let me just clear the air. My, we came to my, we, we opened a store in, um, in Los Angeles on June 16th, 2017. And we had a big grand opening. And oh. like Russell Westbrook came, you know, Emory Jones came, um, you know, a lot of people came. 21 Savage pulled up. And oh, this up. is great. It, mind you, it's in the heart of my neighborhood. You feel me? Right. So, you know, not only was there, you know, the, the city councilman was out there. Right. It was also three, four hundred of my homies out there. Right. Riding mini bikes. You know, we had the food trucks out. It it's was L.A. Like a, yeah, it was. L.A., it, L.A. Yeah, yeah. for <laughs> sure. Um, Jim Jones came. But nice. 21 Savage came and. You know what I mean? Show love, took a picture by the logo, Great. kicked it, smoked some weed with the homies and everything. So, you know, when 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 I seen that story pop up, my one of my a woman that um she's a pastor in LA. Mm -hmm. And she um, you know, she prayed over my son when he was born. Mm -hmm. And um her and my my girl, they really close, yeah. you know, and so she called me and she like, Is everything okay? She was praying for me through the text. <laughs> I said, Listen, I appreciate the prayers, you know. First of all, nobody shoot at me. Second of all, yeah. 
especially wasn't no hit from 21 Savage. Right. Nah, man, I respect 21. We good. And I was just some shit to blogs, man. And that's really, I don't like that energy, though. Like, I think that blogs and people who are putting that out need to have some type of responsibility with that kind of energy. We're talking about detrimental situations. You know what I mean? It's not like, oh, I think I saw someone at the mall. Right. right? The, and it's not even to that point. Not to yeah. Up, right? It's people that love 21 Savage. It's people, it's people that love Nick. Yes. That's still active. That's still in the streets. Yes. That might not have a clarity on this is fake. Exactly. That might run into each other somewhere and get into a real funk over yes. some shit that wasn't even, had zero truth to it. Exactly. And so, on one hand, I ain't even want to speak no energy For into sure. it. For sure. Absolutely. I think it's important to just clear that shit up. Like, a blog just made some shit I'm up. I'm That's so it. glad nothing. Yeah. I really, really uh, am. I think because, you know, as you grow in this industry and you just see so many successful young men, you just want to see everybody win. 100%. You know what I mean? Like, I want to see everybody do good. And I, I was really happy to, to hear about you created this. It's STEM. Right. This program. Yeah. For is it your neighborhood? Yeah, it's in the first one is in uh, my neighborhood and it's it's fully functional now. It's up and running. It's called Vector Ninety. Okay. Um, I'm one of the partners on it. The actual founder, his name is David Gross. Okay. And um, you know, dude is just a young genius hustler boss. You know, dude grew up in L.A., came to New York. You know, went to Ivy League schools, mm -hmm. Concord. He grew up in the hood in L.A. Mm. and um became really successful as a real estate developer and just as an entrepreneur. And um. One of the things he wanted to do was create this pipeline mm -hmm. that we started in my neighborhood called Vector 90. And so it's on it's online. If you Google Vector 90, um, it's a 5,000 square foot compound. It's two wow. stories. Yeah. It's the old Wonder Bread factory. We got a part of wow. my, my neighborhood that's all industrial and it's right. all factory. So it's an mm -hmm. old Wonder Bread factory that's renovated. And the top level, like a WeWork space yeah. for, for local entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And the bottom level is going to be the STEM center. And so my sister's one of the entrepreneurs that has an office there now. Um, they have they had like a Women's Appreciation Day. Oh, I love this. You know what I mean? Where they honored all the all the um, women entrepreneurs from the area. Yeah. Um, they have like a Shark Tank style content that they create right. where all the young um, developers or entrepreneurs can pitch ideas and it's, a, it's beautiful. they can get them funded also somebody gonna win and get it funded oh my god yeah so next time you in la you should come through and just check it out so how does someone become a part of it first like how does like a young person become part of the stem program that you started so basically what it is is it's going to cater to the people in the area okay primarily but if if there's somebody that you know has transportation and can pull up because it's, oh. it's centrally located to where if you if you're in the area you can ride your bike yeah and so the goal is to have one in my neighborhood, in the Crenshaw District, have one in Compton that's linked to the mayor, mm -hmm. Asia Brown, and YG maybe. Have one in Baltimore that, you know, go through Emory or go through Mello. Yeah. Have one, you know, in different areas and anchor it to celebrities that got influence. Yeah. And um, so that's the big picture goal, you know. But for, for people, if you can make it there, you, you the doors is open. And um, the bottom part is still being built. Right. The top level, which is the WeWork, um, level that's the part called vector 90 yeah the stem part is called too big to fail Ugh. and so they're working on that now still. why was this so important for you um a couple reasons just number one the way it was articulated i was at a laker game and i just was sitting next to dave mm -hmm. i didn't i never met him and you know sec by the second half we had took shots everybody was a little friendly started right. talking <laughs> shit, you know what I'm saying? right and he like yeah nip you know i got a, i got a project i think you perfect for it could you pull up to the office in Calabasas tomorrow? I said, all right, well, I'll come through. Cool. I pull up, and um, he and, and Will Smith's team had an office together. And, you know, he just showed me the blueprint and was like, this is what I'm doing. And this, all, this, is, this is what else I'm involved in outside of this. And so I just automatically knew he was somebody that think like I think. And then he told me a story from L.A. Mm. And I just, me and dude connected on a personal level. Like, I, I respect dude, and I fuck with him. And um, the, the blueprint just made perfect sense. So I'm like, shit, what should I do? He like, bro, just ride with me, you know what I mean? And um, when it's time to put the uh, the play together, you know, we come to the table and, and lock in. And everything he said he was gonna do, he did it in a shorter time frame than what he said. Mm. So I can't take the credit for the idea. I just believed in it and got behind it and became a part of it. But- um, I love it. Yeah, and, he, and my personal connection to it is that, you know, I was a young dude that was committed to creativity early right and then you know i fell into the streets for lack of um 
outlet. You know what I mean? No resources, yeah. no access. That's, but I that's was a always, real factor. Period. But I was always somebody that was, I was different. I was never just, you know, a, a, you know what I mean? Just completely self-destructive young dude. I was always somebody that was fucking with computers or, you know, trying to learn how to make beats or right. rapping early. And I just got so frustrated with not having no outlet that I damn near threw the towel in on trying to, trying to be creative or trying to, you know, go against the grain of my, my, the culture I was surrounded by, right. you know what I mean? So I, I know the pressure of having good intentions and yeah. then seeing nowhere for them to connect and saying, yeah. fuck it, yeah. you know? So I think that to have those places where people can connect early, you'll save a lot of people. Absolutely. You know I, I, mean? I When I saw that, I was really, really happy. This, yeah. These are the kind of stories that people need to personally focus on because I feel like it's very inspirational. I hope other people are inspired right. and I hope that they can do something with their platform. Whatever that something is that yeah. fits your means, yeah. I think it's really important. I, I'm just, I'm happy. And being that I'm originally from the West, I'm, I'm, I love seeing the positive yeah. energy. Yeah. And the next time you come out here, bring Lauren. Oh yeah, she in Canada filming. She'd have been out here with me. She she's in Canada filming a movie right now. And we love you guys together. No, nah, thank you. She loves y'all too. You I don't want y'all not to be together. You no, know I get. We we <laughs> solid though. We locked in. We good money. No, you guys yeah. are always gonna be together. Yeah. We just had this. I think it was me <laughs> about right yesterday. We were just talking like y'all always gonna be together forever. But she's a beautiful person. Actually, Colin and I saw her in LA, and she couldn't have been sweeter. Like, nah, and she's yeah, she she's just she. a good good soul and i um i'm glad you two have each other no thank you i agree with you though she's she's a quality Ugh. a very quality person outside of her being beautiful and everything that's what i really love about about her the most like she's just a great human being you know what i'm saying genuine yeah 100 percent. very kind and genuine 100%. and i you know it makes sense why you guys are together no don't let this be the last time you come and visit us no 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 you know like, that. don't forget about but by us. the way y'all gotta invite me i can't just are pop you up you i can't just come knock at the this door this is your second home all right that's on tape so when i that, pull up with my new tape. single and all that this is my second <laughs> home y'all make sure y'all remember that absolutely yeah. it's so good to see you no, likewise this was dope thank you of course yeah I need my shirt too. Yes, I got you. All right. All right, cool.